Hello students, welcome to the lecture on organizing and after this lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the organizational design and structure, describe the departmentation and coordination, explain differentiation and integration, discuss about centralization and decentralization, tell about the delegation, explain the global organizing, discuss coordination, functions in organization, explain the authority and power. Let us start with the meaning of organizing. Organizing is a function of management that involves developing an organizational structure and allocating human resources to ensure the accomplishment of objectives. The structure of the organization is a framework within which effort is coordinated. The structure is usually represented by an organization chart which provides a graphic representation of the chain of command within an organization. Decisions made about the structure of an organization are generally referred to as organizational design, organizational design, the matching of organizational forms such as structure, reporting, relationship, and information technology with the organization strategy decision, organizing involving the design of individual jobs within the organization. Decision must be made about the duties and responsibilities of individual jobs as well as the manner in which the duties should be carried out. Decision made about the nature of jobs within the organization are generally called job design decision. Organizing at the level of the organization also involves deciding how best to departmentalize or cluster jobs into departments to coordinate efforts effectively. There are many different ways to departmentalize including organizing by function, product, geography or customer. Many larger organizations use multiple methods of departmentalization. Organizing at level of a particular job involves how best to design individual jobs to most effectively use human resources. Traditionally, job design is a process of putting together various elements to form a job bearing in mind organizational and individual worker requirements was based on principle of division of labor and specialization which assumed that the more narrow the job content, the more proficient the individual performing the job could become. Recently, many organizations have attempted to strike a balance between the need for worker specialization and the need for workers to have jobs that entail variety and autonomy. Many jobs are now designed based on such principles as empowerment, job enrichment. A job redesign technique that allows workers more control over how they perform their own tasks and teamwork. Cooperative effort by the members of a group or team to achieve a common goal. Let us now understand the nature of organization in brief. Division of work. Division of work is the basic of an organization. Coordination. The work of one person starts from where the work of another person ends. Plurality of persons. Organization is a group of many persons who assemble to fulfill a common purpose, common objective. There are various parts of an organization with different functions to perform but all move in the direction of achieving a general objective. Well-defined authority and responsibility. Under organization, a chain is established between different posts right from the top to the bottom. Organization is a structure of relationship between person working on different posts in the organization is decided. Organization is a machine of management. Organization is considered to be a machine of management because the efficiency of all the functions depends on an effective organization. Organization is a universal process. Organization is needed both in business and non-business organization. Organization is a dynamic process. Organization is related to people and the knowledge and experience of the people undergo a change. Meet David. David's the CEO of a big company. David's company is growing fast, very fast. And to maintain a competitive edge in an era of hyper-competition, David plans to introduce a change in the way he's doing business. Any good leader knows that the only thing that's constant is change. Changes both within and outside the organization. Mergers, acquisitions, adopting new practices, upgrading technology, all of these are inevitable. 
Davids decided to implement ERP to manage critical functions like sales, finance, and human resources. But how are these changes going to affect the average employee? Someone like Sam, for instance. Meet Sam. Sam's an accountant. He's great with numbers. What he's not so great at is handling unpredictability. He's worried about how he will manage with the ERP system. Will he be trained properly and on time? Will the new system be launched at one go? Will the timeline of these changes be communicated to him? Sam's too anxious to focus on work. He misses deadlines. His customers are unhappy. He's so apprehensive and stressed that he quits. Now imagine the same situation with every employee of the organization. Not just Sam from accounts, but Bobby from sales and Ann from HR too. That's a lot of uncertain people stressing out about the ERP with no clear communication, worrying about changes that could have been handled better. Morale drops, attrition increases, deadlines are missed, quality falls, customers are complaining, the company suffers. Now you know why David's nervous. But what if there was another way? What if you could pick up the phone and call the specialist in managing organization change? Leading industry experts with the experience and the know-how to help ease your organization through difficult periods of transition. That's where we come in. We specialize in organizational change management. We can help assess exactly how to deal with any change in your organization identify potential change barriers, and create a change roadmap. A change management strategy. A strategy that will ensure everyone affected by these changes are sufficiently engaged and their buy-in ensured. We'll manage key stakeholders at each step of the change journey. Focus on people capability through training sessions and ensure people alignment with the organization design. And what are the benefits for you? increased productivity, project cost control, and greater confidence with better performance and happier customers. Now moving on to the next topic, we will now study the importance and advantages of organizing. Organization is an instrument that defies relation among different people which helps them to understand as in who happens to be their superior and who is their subordinate. Increase in managerial efficiency, a good and balanced organization helps the managers to increase their efficiency. Proper utilization of resources. Through the medium of organization, optimum utilization of all the available human and material resources of an enterprise becomes possible. Sound communication. Possible communication is essential for taking the right decision at the right time. Facilitate. Coordination organization is the only medium which makes coordination possible. Increase in specialization. Under organization, the whole world is divided into different parts. Helping in expansion, a good organization helps the enterprise in facing competition. Now we will discuss the organizational design and structure. Organization is an instrument that defines relation among different people which helps them to understand as in who happens to be their superior and who is their subordinate. Hello Sarah. Can I explain any management concepts? Professor Siegfried, can you define organizational structure? Well, Sarah, organizational structure refers to the following. 1. The formal division of the organization into subunits. 2. The location of decision-making responsibilities within this structure, centralized versus decentralized. Thirdly, the establishment of integrating mechanisms to coordinate the activities of subunits including cross-functional teams or pan-regional committees. Thanks Professor, for defining organizational structure. Principles of organization structure Line and staff relationship Line authority refers to the scalar chain or the superior subordinate linkages that extend throughout the hierarchy. Departmentalization 
Departmentalization is a process of horizontal clustering of different types of functions and activities on any one level of the hierarchy. Differentiation and integration DI. Differentiation refers to determining what the basic units of the organization will be, what needs to be separate and distinct based on the required function or focuses of the organization. Integration refers to how to get the differentiated parts to play together, that is how to ensure that the parts of the organization can interact to provide the necessary coordinated outputs. A common error in organization design is thinking that the structure is all there is so the lines and boxes are redrawn but little or no attention is paid to the processes that define focuses and enable the required integration, coordination and collaboration among the differentiated entities. Division of labor Subdivision of work into separate jobs assigned to different people potentially increases work efficiency. Span of control, number, people directly reporting to the next level, assume coordination through direct supervision. Types of organizational structure, functional organizational structure. Employees within the functional division of an organization tend to perform a specialized set of talks. For instance, the engineering department would be staffed only with software engineers. Divisionalized structure. Divisionalized structure, also called a product structure, the divisional structure groups each organizational function into a division. Matrix structure groups employees by both function and product. Weak functional matrix, a project manager with only limited authority is assigned to oversee the cross functional aspect of the project. Balance functional matrix, a project manager is assigned to oversee the project. Feature of team-based structures, self-directed work teams, teams organized around work processes, very flat span of control. Network organizational structure. Another modern structure is network. Contingencies of organizational design. What matters is the overall organization design is aligned with the business strategy and the market environment in which the business operates. Here are just some of the many things that you can consider when thinking about the structure of your organization. Strategy. The organization design must support your strategy. Size. The design must take into account the size of your organization. Controls. Some activities need special controls such as patient services in hospital, money handling in banks and maintenance in air transport. Wells, others are more efficient when there is a high degree of flexibility. Incentives. Incentives and rewards must be aligned with the business strategy and purpose. Let's know the meaning of departmentation. Departmentation is the process of grouping of work activities into departments, divisions, and other homogeneous units. There are some key factors in departmentation. It should facilitate control. It should ensure proper coordination. It should take into consideration the benefits of specialization. Functional departmentation. Functional departmentation is a process of grouping activities by function performed. It can be used in all types of organization. Advantages are advantage of specialization, easy control over function, Disadvantages are lack of responsibility for the end result, over specialization, or lack of general management. Product departmentation. Product departmentation is a process of grouping activities by product line. Advantages are it ensures a better customer service, unprofitable products may be easily determined. The disadvantages are it is expensive as duplication of service function occurs in various product division. Customers and dealers have to deal with different person for complaint and information of different products. Customer departmentation. Customer departmentation is a process of grouping activities on the basic of common customers or types of customers. Advantages are it focuses on customers who are ultimate supplier of money. Development in general managerial skills. Specialized skills staff may become idle with the downward movement of sales to any specific group of customers. Process departmentation. Geographic departmentation is the process of grouping activities on the basic of product or service or customer flow. Advantages are oriented towards end result. Professional identification is maintained. 
The disadvantages are conflict in organization authority exist, possibility of disunity of command, matrix departmentation. In actual practice, no single pattern of grouping activities is applied in the organization structure with all its levels. Advantages Efficiently manage large, complex tasks. Effectively carry out large, complex tasks. Disadvantages are Requires high levels of coordination, conflict between bosses. Centralization Centralization is the process of transferring and assigning decision, making authority to higher levels of an organizational hierarchy. Characteristic of centralization. Decision making, strong, authoritarian, visionary, charismatic. Organizational change, shaped by top vision of leader. Advantages of centralization, provide power and prestige for manager, promote uniformity of policies, practices and decision. Disadvantages of centralization, neglected functions for mid-level and less motivated beside personal. Decentralization. Decentralization is a process of transferring and assigning decision, making authority to lower levels of an organizational hierarchy. Characteristic of decentralization, decision making democratic, participative, detailed participation accountability, Low risk of non invented here behavior. There are three forms of decentralization. D. De concentration. The weakest form of decentralization is deconcentration. Delegation. It is a more extensive form of decentralization. Devolution. A third type of decentralization is devolution. Advantages of decentralization bring decision making close to action. Develop sound line managers, disadvantages of decentralization. Top level administration may feel it would decrease their status. It may lead to overlapping and duplication of effort. Now moving on to the next topic, delegation. Delegation is about entrusting someone else to do part of your job. Elements of delegation authority. Authority is the right to give commands, orders and get the things done. Responsibility. Responsibility flows from bottom to top. Delegation process. The steps involved in delegation are allocation of duties. The delegator first tries to define the tasks and duties to the subordinate. Assigning of responsibility and accountability. The delegation process does not end once powers are granted to the subordinates. Creation of accountability. Accountability, on the other hand, is the obligation of the individual to carry out his duties as per the standards of performance. Global organizing helps unions to build strong, effective organizations that are better able to improve the lives of its members, both in the workplace and in society. Rebuilding unions Unions which had been facing a decline in membership are on their way back. The principal reason for this is that they are adopting a different approach. Now coming to our next topic of this lecture, coordination function in organization. According to Mooney and Riley, coordination is orderly arrangement of group efforts to provide unity of action in the pursuit of common goals. Coordination is an integral element or ingredient of all the manual function as discussed below. Coordination through planning. Planning facilitates coordination by integrating the various plans through mutual discussion, exchange of ideas. Coordination through staffing. A manager should bear in mind that the right number from above discussion, we can very much affirm that coordination is a very much a sense of management. Coordination and cooperation. Coordination is an effort to integrate effectively Energies of different groups, whereas cooperation is sought to achieve general objective of business. Need for coordination. There are some disintegrating forces that emphasize the need for coordination is any enterprise, drivers and specialized activities. Coordination becomes necessary only when the principle of specialization has been introduced in the enterprise to run its affairs. Empire building tendencies. Manager or such department usually take shelter under the cover of vague and undefined authority delegation, personal rivalries and jealousies. Human organization give rise in course of time of the development of personality politics among members. Conflict of interest. 
Subordination of general interest to individual interest acts as a bar of coordination. Types of coordination. The coordination may be divided on different bases, namely scope. On the basic of scope or coverage, coordination can be internal, refers to coordination between the different units of the organization within and is achieved by integrating the goals and activities of different departments of the enterprise. Flow. On the basic of flow, coordination can be classified into procedural and substantive, which according to Herbert A. Simon, procedural coordination implies the specification of the organization in itself, that is the generalized description of the behavior and relationship of the membership of the organization. Techniques of coordination. The main techniques of effective coordination are as follows. Sound planning. Unity of purpose is the first essential condition of coordination. Simplified organization. A simple and sound organization is an important means of coordination. Effective leadership and supervision. Effective leadership ensures coordination both at the planning and execution stage. Chain of command. Authority is the supreme coordinating power in an organization. Voluntary coordination. When every organization unit appreciates the working of related units and modifies its own functioning to suit them, there is self-coordination. Principle of coordination requisite for effective coordination. Mary Parker Follett has laid out these principles for effective coordination. Direct personal contact. According to this principle, coordination is best achieved through direct personal contact with people concerned. Early beginning. Coordination can be achieved more easily in early stage of planning and policy making. Continuity. Coordination is an ongoing or never-ending process rather than a once-for-all activity. Now we will discuss authority and power. Organization or voluntary association, though rational entities often do not follow strictly their own well-defined system leaving scope for power play and politics. Authority. According to Max Weber, there are three types of authorities. Traditional, rational, charismatic authority. Characteristic of authority. Authority resides in the position and is individual independent. Authority is in proportion to levels in an organization. Ideally, there is a positive correlation between the authority and degree of competence. Power. Power which is derived from social positioning lacks legitimacy. It is dependent upon individual strength and competencies. There are several kinds of power, some of which are described below. Coercive power, legitimate power, personal power. Coercive power, the extent to which a manager can deny desired rewards or administer punishment to control other people. Legitimate power. If legitimacy is lost, authority will not be accepted by subordinates. Personal power. Personal power is derived from individual sources. Distinction between authority and power. Authority is legally enforced and is derived from level of positioning in an organization. Power, however, is individual and independent and originates from charisma and social positioning. Authority is formal based upon superior and subordinate relationship. Power is informal and is based upon individual understanding. Line and staff authority. In an organization, the line authority flows from top to bottom and the staff or authority is exercised by the specialist over the line manager who advises them on important matters. Types of staff. The staff position established as a measure of support for the line managers may take the following forms. Personal staff. Here the staff official is attached as a personal assistant or advisor to the line manager. Specialized staff. Said staff acts as a fountain head of expertise in specialized areas like R&D, personal accounting, etc. Features of line and staff organization. The staff officers are specialists who offer expert advice to the line officer to perform their tasks efficiently. The line and staff organization is based on the principle of specialization. Advantages. It brings expert knowledge to bear upon management and operating problems. It is based upon plans specialization. Disadvantages are the staff experts may be ineffective because they do not get the authority to implement their recommendation. Since staff managers are not accountable for the result, they may not be performing their duties well. 
Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Organizing is the function of management that involves developing an organizational structure and allocating human resources to ensure the accomplishment of objective. Organization is a group of many persons who assemble to fulfill a common purpose. Organization is an instrument that defines relation among different people which helps them to understand as in who happens to be their superior and who is their subordinate. Departmentalization is a process of horizontal clustering of different types of functions and activities on any one level of the hierarchy. Customer departmentation is the process of grouping activities on the basic of common customer or types of customers. Centralization is a process of transferring and assigning decision, making authority to a higher level of an organizational hierarchy. Decentralization is a process of transferring and assigning decision, making authority to lower level of an organizational hierarchy. Authority is the right to give commands, orders and get the things done. Coordination is an effort to integrate effectively energies of different groups, whereas cooperation is sought to achieve general objective of business. Organization or voluntary association, though rational entities, often do not follow strictly their own well-defined system, leaving scope for power play and politics. Power which is derived from social positioning lacks legitimacy. It is dependent upon individual strength and competencies.